Hello, hello, everyone. This is another episode of Let's Talk Sports with Tim McCain, and I have the pleasure, the very pleasure, of interviewing Kane the Beast Tomlinson Sr. He is a mixed martial artist. He is a bare knuckle fighter. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when did your love for the fight game begin? Well, um, to be honest, man, I was a kid, and I used to watch the fights on um, t TV, and I was a bit of a dreamer. So I would, you know, be shadow boxing in front of the TV, and my great-grandpa great was a Golden Gloves fighter and a prize fighter, and my dad fought in the Navy as well. So it's just been, you know, I figured it's in the blood, and I've always had Ad admirations and dreams about it. So I knew it was to come about eventually. So I just follow, followed the path that was let, let out for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what were some of the stories that your grandfather uh, told you about being a Golden Glove champion and even your father uh, in the Navy? Well, it was my grand my grand grandma who told me about it. My grandfather was no longer around. Ah. And my father pa passed away as well serving his country. So I didn't get a chance to have the opportunities to see or spend time with him, but but the fight the fighter was still in me, so to speak. So I had to follow follow that. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So um when did you start fighting uh, uh, originally? Did you have like were you a, were you a boxer? Originally, like, what was some, what, when did you actually start fighting as a mixed martial artist or as a boxer? Well, I started doing uh, sanctioned boxing back in uh, 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. I fought in a uh, rough and rowdy brawl boxing contest. And um, I continued to do that and travel on the road, being part of the road crew, putting on fights and working corners. And I then I had the opportunity to fight MMA back in I think like 2006. So I j jumped on that because the boxing has sort of stopped uh, around here, and the only opportunity to fight was MMA. So I wanted to fight, so I chose to go ahead and start doing MMA. What was that transition like going from? a boxing background, I mean, having a family of boxers and then transitioning to a sport where there's different fighting styles that are told that, you know, boxing is just with the fist and the legs and the head movement and stuff, but with mixed martial arts, there's so much more into it. So what was that transition like for you? Well, at first I thought MMA guys were soft. I thought, you know, jujitsu guys were soft because I'm a boxer, you know, sweet feet, sweet hands. but I kind of got humbled real quick. So <laughs> after my my first heartbreaking loss, I decided to take it serious, mm. and I started really training and taking the whole the whole fight game serious. So yes, and that that's when I just started, you know, started training jujitsu and Muay Thai and wrestling and just putting it all together, being an all around fighter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what was it like um, bringing your sons in with you into this fight game? What has that experience been like for you? It has its ups and downs. I mean, being a father, it's scary. Yeah. Mm. When they was kids, they used to watch me in the wrestling ring because I, I did wrestling too. And um, so there was always around some type of athletic or combative sport. But I kind of knew that they was going to go that that route. But when the time came, it was pretty scary, especially their first, first fight. Because my oldest boy, Zion, his first actual full com combat, full rules MMA, he was 15. Mm. So, I mean, that's elbows, knees, the whole nine yards. So that was a... Uh, Pretty scary, but yes, sir. He he won. That's and good. From there, it's been a 
been, you know, just a rocket ship straight to the top, you know. So Absolutely. hopefully it don't, it, it, don't, it, don't, it, it don't stop. Oh, it won't. It won't. Zion's, Zion, he's got, he's got the heart of a lion. You know, I could just tell the first time I saw him fight, I think it was uh, Spartaca uh, 41, Spartaca 42. I'm not sure which one it was, but I could just tell the way that he went. It was him and Kyle Wright, I yeah. believe. They were going back and forth, and it was just the war. And I was like, he's going to be something special. I knew then. Same thing for Kane. I think Kane yeah. could, could definitely be somebody um, who could be a champion one day. Um I I, I think Kane, Kane's best attribute is his hands. He mm-hmm. has really, really n- nice hands. But he wants to be the best at everything. So, you know, that's just Kane. You tell tell him he can't do something, then he'll prove you wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So wh- what were some of the greatest um, battles in the octagon that you faced? And um, what did you take from yourself? Like, win or loss, what did, how did you feel about yourself leaving the octagon? One of my toughest fights, I fought at 205. Mm. And um, I, I, I walk around around 200, so I, I had to put on some, some weight. It, it, it went into the second round. I won the fight, but inside, you know, I – I didn't win, you know, I was exhausted. I was barely to be able to walk. So I knew then that, you know, if I'm going to be fighting with the big guys, I'm going to have, have to be in big guy shape, you know, mm. not just take the fight on a whim and just go in there. Cause I think I'm a badass. I feel you. I feel you. So your last fight, which um, was a huge stage, um, Shaq was there. What was it like meeting Shaq? But also um, the war that you, uh, when you were going back and forth with Brad Kelly, because it was it was a battle. Well, I tell you, man, this whole fight camp, I, I I had a good fight camp up until the last three or four weeks. So I had to cut that last bit of weight. I went from 206 down to one sixty four. Ooh. So yeah. It, it was tough. It was tough on my my body and mentally, and I didn't think I was gonna make weight, so I starved myself. And then I, I made weight, but I couldn't put anything back on because my stomach was all messed up from cutting all that weight. Fight night came. Um, Brad Kelly, I knew he had a big overhand right. So I, I trained my whole time to watch out for that overhand, and I knew he shorter than me. So I wanted to stick my jab out there so he'll go under for the uppercut. So my my plan wor- worked out great. But, you know, plans are always plans. They yeah. <laughs> so we're going back and forth, and I, I seen I hurt him with a body shot to the rib. So I figured I was go ahead and finish him off. And Brad Kelly is a tough dude. I mean, he's really tough. We're and and they're going back and forth. And I felt my whole body just drain. Mm. All of a sudden, just wipe out, just drain. And I got caught with that overhand to the temple. And I my left leg started doing a stanky leg. <laughs> but uh, I I didn't want to go out like that so i hopped back up and i was gonna tell myself i'm gonna just go in there and knock him out with the right hand but i took a one too big of a step and got caught walked right into the overhand right that i'll practice not to walk into and he laid me on my my back and i told myself then man you walked right into that so i hopped back up again uh, stanky leg i knew uh it was the beginning of the end, but I wasn't going to go out. So I, I went out there. I, I was going to go out swinging, and that's pretty much what I did. Shaq, mm-hmm. that's a big dude. <laughs> <laughs> Shaq is a big man. I mean, I've been, been around big guys in my life, but Shaq's a big man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he his also hands, said his, his hands. 
His hands are huge. Oh, really? That's yeah. Crazy. But like, uh, I think you, you also posted on social media where you were saying how like he said that you you were his favorite fight. Yeah, but you know, um, he told Sheena Star that 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 too. So, I guess up until her fight, my mine was his favorite fight. <laughs> but uh, the girl fight that was that was a really good good fight. Everybody loves the chick fight. You know, they always yes. put on a good show. Absolutely. You're talking about the Jenny Savage scene of start. Yes, that was a, yeah. definitely a great yeah. fight. Definitely a great fight. So you've been fighting for over 20 years. What's kept you in the game? Like, what are some of the things mentally that you had to prepare yourself through, uh, physically prepare yourself through to continue a 20-year career in the fight game? Well, at first, it was a goal. I wanted to be a champion. So that gave me the drive. And then once I became champion, champion it was my kids because mm. they they started fighting so that was my my drive to continue on because when i do good or when they see me can continue it gives them the inspiration to con continue on and do well in the fight game so now there that's my my drive now mm. is my kids Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And how long do you want to continue on to the fight? How long do you want to stay in the fight game? I told everybody I'm going to fight till I'm 50. Ooh, four yeah. more years. Yeah, I know. Shh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Love it. yeah. So, question for you. Um, do you win more from your wins or your losses? Uh, I get more out of a loss because you know for for me it's not about winning really i don't care if i win or lose as long as i do good and com compete to my best ability that day you know it's not always gonna be a great fight but it's gonna be a fight you know and if i win i win if, if i lose i lose I, it don't matter no more i'm too old to you know to care as long as I'm relevant, you know, that's the main thing. Relevant. Interesting. I like it. I like it. So what are some of the, um, uh, the lessons that you told your sons about the fight game that, you know, they, they come, you say, Hey dad, you've been in the fight game for over 20 years. You've been in the fight game and you continue, you've had a successful career in it. What are some uh, keys and advice that you've given to your sons about, their own mixed martial arts career. Well, I, I try to tell them don't take everybody lightly, you know, but it's kind of hard to tell them that. They, I'm daddy, you know, <laughs> I'm daddy, you know, you don't know nothing, you dumb, you know, shut up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, I know they hear, hear me. They, they might not listen to me, but they hear me. Mm. So, yeah, I just tell them, you know, and, Keep grinding, you know, don't quit, man. If you got something in sight, man, don't let go of it. It, it might seem far away, man, but every inch you get closer to it, it all have happened if you just don't, don't, don't quit. Yes, sir. Don't quit. And that's for everybody. That's for everybody. I like that. I like yeah. that. So I, I, know, I know you've been the game. You've been a student. Of, of the game, so I, I gotta ask you these questions. Uh, who are your top five boxers of all time? And um, who are some of the top five mixed martial artists of all time, from your perspective? Boxers, I, I've always been a James Tony fan, you know, and uh, George Foreman, Foreman, the the older George Foreman, you mm. know, the one, and uh, Evander, because of the heart, because of the heart, you know. But mainly, I've my my favorite favorite, favorite fighter has been James James Tony. Interesting. Why James Tony? Because he he just went through all the weight cl classes and still and still was still a bad bad man, you know. No no, no matter what what weight he fought, he still coming there and he did his thing and he's all about that defense that 
Philly shell, you know. And yes, sir. I, I can rock rock with James James Tony, and he don't care. He tell it like it is. Ah, I like that. That's true. That's true. Okay, okay. And top mixed martial arts artist of all time, top five. I'm more of a local guy. I don't really care. You know, I like my the local MMA guys, man. And one of my fav, fav, favorite MMA guys here is Jason Quackenbush, Quack Attack. You know, he's been to a lot and champion again. So, Oh, he's one of my favorite guys, and my son Zion. You know? mm. I like it. I like it. Okay, okay. So, oh, they they sleep on him, man. But I, I say they sleep on him, but he's gonna he's gonna rock the world one day. Yes, sir. I believe it. And he's only he's only twenty one years old. He's only yes. twenty one years old. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what is success to Kane Tomlinson? What does success mean from your definition? Well, I mean, to achieve your goals and to be ha happy with who you are and where you are. It, do it, it don't mean to have things, but to feel good in your life and where you are now that you succeeded because it's all about being happy. If you wake up today feeling better than you did yesterday, then you succeeded. Happiness, man. Feel good. Be big be, be be glad to be alive. Success. Like Su success don't don't got a dollar bill on it. You know, it's it's not a dollar sign. It's a feeling. I like that. I like that. So, so Mr. Thomason, when is your next fight, um, and what weight class do you want to fight in? I don't, I don't know if you want to. What weight class do you want to fight in? I'm gonna go in the 175 or 185. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try to fight in February, if not then March. But, but yeah, I'm gonna uh, be on point this time. Be on a, at a good weight, so I can fight at my best abilities yes sir, knock, yes, sir. A, knock a man out well i would say this <laughs> i mean at the end of the day you have to be a true warrior i mean to to be from 206 to go all the way down to 164 that's what warriors do you know so i i think that that you should be um celebrated for doing that you know not, not a lot of people would do what you did you know, that, that that shows how much you love the fight game. And I believe that's what the fight game needs. Um, what is your thoughts on uh, bare knuckle fighting and the opportunity to fight on such a big stage? Man, it's a blessing, man, for real. Because for guys like myself who really aren't the best MMA fighters, and boxing career is kind of on the downslide because of our age, our reaction time. This is perfect. You know, we're still able to fight because the last thing goes is your strength and your heart, you know. And that's what us older guys still got. And BKFC is where it's at. Everybody loves to see action. And that's what Dave Feldman wants. Action. And that's what Bear and Uncle brings. It's okay. great. I love it. It's for me. Definitely for me. I'm worried about my son, though, but he wants to do it, too. But I'll, I'm daddy, you know what I'm saying? It scares <laughs> me to death. Them punch punches hurt, but I'm down for him, too. If he wants to do it, we're going ride, to ride that train together yes, until it sir. derails. Yes, sir. To the wheels come off. That's yes, sir. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, Kane, where can they find you on social media? Do you have a YouTube channel or anything like that? It's uh Kane Tomlinson on Facebook and on Instagram is old dogs by underscore Tomlinson the Beast. 
I like that old dog's bite. Yes, sir. Old dog's bite. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Tomlinson, for um, spending a few moments with me. I, I really appreciate it, sir. Thank you, man. Have a blessed day. You as well.